This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. As we turn to Iran, which marked the 34th anniversary of the Islamic Revolution Sunday with mass rallies amidst increasing pressure from the United States over its nuclear program. In his final major address to the Iranian nation ahead of presidential elections in June, which will end his eight-year term, President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad explained the conditions under which he would engage in direct talks with the United States. As the Supreme Leader said, it won't happen when you put a gun to the nation and then expect it to hold negotiations. Negotiations are for what? They are to resolve misunderstandings. I say this explicitly, that changing your language is needed, but it's not enough. You put down the gun, then I myself will talk to you. Last week, the Obama administration announced a new expansion of sanctions against Iran, a move described by The New York Times as, quote, economic war on Wednesday. The Depar Treasury Department said it would pressure countries buying Iran's oil to withhold direct payments and instead force Iran to purchase their goods. The Treasury also widened the sanctions list to include Iranian state media. Iran said its English-language press TV channel had been dropped from the satellite platform that allowed it to broadcast in the United States. States and Canada. On Friday, Secretary of State John Kerry commented on Iran's nuclear program and the prospect for negotiations. The announcement the Iranians themselves have made in a letter to the IAEA, in which they have announced a different kind of centrifuge, uh, is, is concerning. It's disturbing. I want to underscore to Iran. The window for diplomacy is still open, and we have agreed to meet Iran again in two weeks in Kazakhstan. We've made our position clear. The choice is really ultimately up to Iran. The international community is ready to respond if Iran comes prepared to talk real substance and to address the concerns which could not be more clear about their nuclear program. If they don't, then they will choose to leave themselves more isolated. Secretary of State John Kerry speaking Friday. Well, we go now to Washington, D.C., to talk to Trita Parsi, founder and president of the National Iranian American Council, author of Treacherous Alliance, The Secret Dealings of Iran, Israel, and the United States. His new book is called A Single Roll of the Dice, Obama's Diplomacy with Iran. Uh, welcome to Democracy Now! You, Trita, are just back from Britain. Why were you there? I was testifying in the British Parliament's uh, Foreign Relations Committee. About? About this issue with Iran. It was, there's a keen interest and I think a lot of uh, thinking going on in Europe to see whether the strategy that has been pursued that is so sanction-centric, so pressure-centric, really is working. And if it won't work, what is the trajectory that we're heading towards? What is the end result of this path? Talk about the sanctions. Talk about the U.S. saying that they would have direct talks with Iran, as you just heard John Kerry saying. I think the Obama administration is serious. I think they do desire to have diplomacy. But I think the approach to diplomacy is such in which the belief is that the only way to really get a deal is to put maximum pressure on the Iranian regime. And I think that is an approach that um, may sound good on paper, that may sound logical on paper, but in practice it really has worked. Because Iran is now under tremendous amount of sanctions, probably more sanctions on Iran than on any other country during peacetime. Uh, the Iranian rial has uh, dived down more than 50 percent. Oil income has been reduced about 50 percent. The economy in Iran is under tremendous amount of uh, tension and pressure. People are suffering. We are starting to see the early signs of a uh, medicine crisis in Iran. There was a report issued by the Woodrow Wilson Center uh, in Washington, D.C., that showed that although uh, government um, uh, corruption and mismanagement is also uh, important here, this crisis has been caused by the sanctions, and as a result of it, you have people dying in the hospitals and elsewhere simply because of a lack of medicine. But in spite of all of this, you're not seeing the regime change its nuclear calculus. And I would say that this mainly because pressure alone will not work. There has to be negotiations in which something is put on the table that is viewed as strategically valuable by the other side. Only then will we be able to really say that diplomacy has been tested. Last week, President Obama's nominee for CIA Director John Brennan accused Iran of pursuing nuclear weapons. He made the comment during his confirmation hearing. 
and regimes in Tehran and Pyongyang remain bent on pursuing nuclear weapons and intercontinental ballistic missile delivery systems rather than fulfilling their international obligations or even meeting the basic needs of their people. That was John Brennan, Trita Parsi, your response. Well, this is a position of the administration for quite some time, even though the intelligence uh, of all of the P5 states indicate that there has not been a decision in Tehran to weaponize. Uh, the belief is that the Iranians are moving towards a nuclear weapons capability. They're putting everything in order in order to be able to make that decision if they so choose. And as a result, there is an impression that the window is closing in order to be able to address this peacefully. However, in order to really exhaust all of the options to resolve this peacefully, there has to be negotiations that are far more intense, far more serious from both sides. Both sides have so far gone to the table and essentially essentially offer the other side ultimatums rather than engaging in proper negotiations. Both sides have been more keen on taking, uh, more accepting of taking a risk for the status quo or even for escalation than accepting a, a risk for peacemaking. Uh, Trita, I wanted to ask you about Chuck Hagel, President Obama's nominee to become Secretary of Defense. Um, uh, during his confirmation hearing, Chuck Hagel said this about Iran. Uh, I support the president's uh, strong position on containment, uh, as I said. By the way, I've just been handed a note that I uh, 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 misspoke and said I supported the president's position on containment. I if I said that, it, it meant to say that, I obviously, his position on contain containment, we don't have a position on containment. Uh, this got a lot of attention, saying Chuck Hagel was stumbling all over the place during his hearing. But talk about the significance of the substance of what he said. Well, I think because the debate and the conversation in Washington about Iran has been rather hysterical, um, there's been an effort to eliminate options uh, at a very early stage. And there's a very strong effort to make the containment word, a containment option, a, essentially a dirty option, a dirty word in Washington, D.C., um, equating containment with an acceptance of Iran getting a nuclear weapon, uh, signaling that the U.S. at the end of the day is not going to try to prevent a nuclear weapon in Iran, but rather try to find ways to live with it. Um, while the Obama administration's policy is not containment, I think it's important to point out that we still have time to be able to find peaceful solutions to this. It's almost defeatist to go towards a conversation about whether this containment will work or not work, uh, because we're not in a position in which we have to choose between either accepting an Iranian nuclear bomb or uh, going to war with Iran. There are plenty of peaceful options. Diplomacy has not been fully uh, exhausted yet. Unfortunately, however, uh, there doesn't seem to be any support or much support uh, in the U.S. Congress for a peaceful approach uh, centering on diplomacy towards Iran. Uh, last week, President Ahmadinejad responded to a reporter's question about Vice President Joe Biden's comment earlier, suggesting the U.S. is ready for direct dialogue with Iran. For the past 34 years, the Americans have been confronting us. They have to change their attitude. They say and claim that they will use the stick to force Iran to dialogue. This is bad. They should put the stick aside and start the dialogue, dialogue under fair conditions and with mutual respect, the dialogue to resolve everything and not impose positions. That's uh, Iranian President Ahmadinejad. Uh, Trita Parsi, your response. Well, I think both sides are speaking rather uh, beautifully about diplomacy, but unfortunately we're not seeing either side take the type of serious approach to the diplomacy that is really needed. On the one hand, the Iranians do complain that the sanctions approach uh, is not the way to conduct diplomacy. On the other hand, the Iranians have also missed opportunities to accept the bilateral conversation with the United States prior to many of these sanctions were imposed and, and trying to find a way to resolve this issue. Uh, I think there's a, a lot of fear in the region uh, and beyond that unless both sides amend their ways and amend their approach towards diplomacy, we will continue to gravitate towards some form of a confrontation. Um, Trita Parsi, can you reflect on this anniversary of the Iranian Revolution, uh, what, the 34th anniversary and what it means? 
I think the Islamic Republic, in many different ways, is in a crisis. And certainly, the behavior of the government in Iran right now seems to give the impression that they are quite nervous. There's going to be elections in Iran in a couple of months. Uh, rivalries and, and infighting within the regime is reaching an unprecedented level in the manner that it is taking place very openly. Uh, the regime has started to do something that usually it doesn't do prior to elections. Prior to elections, it usually opens up the political space a little bit in order to give the impression that there's going to be a real and valid choice. This time around, they're doing the opposite. They're starting to arrest journalists. Uh, there's rumors that uh, children of some of the opposition leaders are also being arrested now. So there seems to be an intimidation campaign going on, which most likely is, ro is rooted in the fact that the regime is very, very nervous about its own political survival. Is Britain, where you've just returned from, testifying in their equivalent of Congress, the parliament, um, does Britain deal with Iran in a different way, Trita? And does the British media deal with Iran in a different way than the U.S. media? There seems to be a dialogue, a conversation about Iran in Europe as a whole that is a little bit more nuanced, a little bit less uh, hysterical, a little bit less panicky. Not to say that the Europeans are not taking uh, the potential threat uh, from Iran seriously. On the contrary, they have imposed some of the toughest sanctions on the Iranians. But there is a conversation that seems to be a little bit more in-depth, a little bit more nuanced, and a little bit more uh, insightful than what we're seeing over here. And I think the Hegel nomination hearing is an indication of how superficial, how um, much grandstanding we're having in the conversation about Iran in the United States. And that is tremendously unhelpful, because when you elevate a conversation to this hysterical level, what you essentially do is that you eliminate policy options and you leave yourself only with negative policy options. And that's a process that I think we have unfortunately been involved in here in the United States for the last couple of years. I want to thank you, Trita Parsi, for joining thank us. Thank you for having me. Trita Parsi is just back from Britain um, uh, and is author of several books on the United States and Iran. Trita Parsi, founder and president of the National Iranian American Council. His latest book is called uh, Single Roll of the Dice, Obama's Diplomacy with Iran. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report, back in a minute. Thanks so much for watching this report from Democracy Now!, your daily independent global news hour. We don't accept advertising or corporate funding, but rather rely on donations from viewers like you. Please make your contribution by visiting democracynow.org. We need your support today to keep bringing you this hard-hitting, in-depth reporting.